have here a guitar by Kevin Arum, an English luthier and one of the leading exponents of the Torres design. Kevin Arum has been making guitars for many years now. He collaborated with uh, Roman Eos and in many ways his guitars are quite similar to those of Roman Eos. How did you find this instrument? Well, I mean, I, I think it's an excellent instrument. It's really exceptional. Um, and I didn't know so much about the, the history, um, you know, about the uh, collaboration um, with Roman Eos. Um, and I just, I can see why, you know, that he, he's sort of thought of in such high regard because it's an excellent instrument. Um, and immediately uh, you pick it up and it's just easy to play. Very easy, very comfortable in the hand. You know, left hand, right hand, everything feels very balanced. For me, the the most striking thing about it um, was that it didn't have any one quality sort of favoured over another, you know, and sometimes with, with guitars, I think luthiers are battling compromise all the time. So yes. to get good bass, mm -hmm. they're taking something away from the treble, or to get lots of volume, they're compromising on the quality of the tone. What Kevin's obviously got through these years of experience is it's perfectly balanced, you yes. know, everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really, it's a really world class guitar. It's a guitar you could essentially just start playing concerts on. You yes, know, yes. Uh, pretty much immediately. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, nothing problematic about it. <laughs> It's a great testament to the traditional Torres design, that yeah. it really it does everything. And the other thing about this guitar is that it's only been played for about half an hour. Yeah. Uh, so it really is completely new and it sounds yeah. great, it's got all the warmth that you need from an instrument. And as you say, it's very balanced. Yeah. Uh, the, the bass is strong, it's beautiful, it's colourful. Uh, when you're in ninth position, the tone is still as strong as it, as it, as it is in first. And it's got a wonderful treble which has a, a great dynamic potential. It's you can you can push a treble like that, and it will it will always it will always provide yeah uh, for you. We recorded the pieces separately, so mm -hmm. we didn't know what the other uh, was playing, and we both chose quite lyrical pieces which showed the sophistication of this guitar sound, the balance yeah. and the textures and the yeah. the colours and certain chords. Do you find that uh, the guitar lent itself particularly to those Absolutely. qualities? I chose this Cantheon by Lauro, which is one of the central movements of his Venezuelan suite. Um, and it explores every area of the fingerboard with all these rich chords, like you say, in texture. It's like the, the Schumann that you played. What's interesting is when you have a piece like that, that you play anyway, it's in your repertoire, because of the nature of the piece you've decided a lot on colour, you've decided a lot on vibrato, a lot of you know things that are very much in the sound and in the hand and under the nail, it's not just like playing um, something that you want to be quite uniform. They made a lot of decisions about yes. oh, vibrato here, colour here, mm -hmm. and the guitar's completely accepting of it. And we're not in any way like paranoid that it won't work or yes. kind of um, sort of thinking, oh, I wouldn't try that on that because I'm I'm not sure what's going to happen, you know, what this guitar's going to provide. Um, so I was really comfortable to play a piece that was so kind of expressive um, because I was completely confident the guitar had everything there that I needed, mm -hmm. you know. One of the things we both uh, remarked upon uh, with this guitar is its openness, its tonal openness, uh, despite yeah. it being uh, a new guitar straight out of the workshop. Now I wonder if that has something to do with the finish. It's an oil finish, It's that's something that uh, Kevin Arum really led the way in. I've uh, played one other oil finish guitar, because um, they're quite unusual really, you know, I mean, I'd, and it was um, Michael Ritchie, who um, we'll talk about later on in another episode, but um, and it was a sort of kind of one of two, I think, guitars actually that he finished with oil, um, and he was experimenting himself with you know actually the application of the oil and how that works as a finish, um, and I thought that they do have an immediacy, like you know they don't you know they just immediately feel very playable um, and ready, um, but I I'm one, I don't know how much it affects the sound, because I think it would be hard to say that it 
really enhances the sound. I mean, I think the guitar's so well made yes. anyway <coughs> that um, if it had French polish finish, I think it would be a brilliant guitar. Maybe it's a little bit more open. Maybe it's fast because yes. of that finish. You know, maybe it just it feels very lively. Um, but whether or whether or not it gives it a hugely different characteristic, I wouldn't be so sure. Yes. Aesthetically, I actually think it's absolutely beautiful. Yes, I um, yeah, absolutely. You know, so I mean, I think that for me is is good. And I think sometimes with the all finish, you kind of worry. Um, I know I did when Michael showed me this one uh, a while back that he'd done and I thought would it mark very easily you know would mm -hmm. it dirty up a little bit easier and things like that but actually you seem to be able to remove blemishes or sort of imperfections with just very fine wire wool just very gently mm -hmm. yes. and, it, and it comes away you know and, it, and obviously you get it re-oiled you know after a period of time yes. you know after it sort mm -hmm. of dries out but I think it's quite a robust finish actually so.